Hi, I'm Sherry Clark, and welcome to Courage Be Seen, my podcast where we go over strategies, tools, and techniques to help you have more success in your life. I want you to be more authentic, more confident, more empowered. Having these will allow you to have the dreams and desires that you have always uh, wanted to, to get to in, in your life. Now, I'm sure over the last uh, few months, you've had a lot of extra time to think. We all have. So what topics have been coming up for you? Does everything that we've been going through question kind of, you know, what direction, what are you accomplishing in life? Maybe you thought, you know, all these years you've worked so hard, but you really think that and surprised that you haven't accomplished more, or maybe it's just simply thinking, you know, is there more to life than what we're doing? I know as we've been, uh, you know, cooped up at home or, or not going into the office, it's, it's a time where you really do question, you know, what were we so busy with before? And what are we busy with now? We want to get back to the normal, but whatever that is, what, 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 are you, what are you thinking about? Now, in addition to everything with COVID-19, more recently, we've also had um, George Floyd's death and all the riots and, and protests. And this is creating even more people questioning, you know, do we, I don't even know if we want to go back to the old normal. A lot of people don't. Instead, we want to create, you know, what is new? What, what should the, our lives be full of? What is the purpose with, with our lives? I know if I would look back on my life like six months ago, what would a typical day look like? And you could do this for yourself. I would get up early. I'd go to CrossFit. Then I'd uh, go into the office. I'd have lots of meetings. I'd spend all day at work. After work, I would probably do something with my son. Maybe he had ball practice or therapy. or And then we'd eat and, and kind of repeat over and over and over again. But what's different now? The days are, are, are quite different. If I do go in the office, and I go in the office once or twice a week, I don't spend as much time driving. It, uh, there is more traffic uh, in the last few weeks than been in the past, but it, I still can get in the office faster. So I spend less time on the road. That gives me more time to do other things. If I'm home, every day that I'm home, I eat lunch with my son. I love it. It's, it's a great thing to, to sit down at the kitchen table and be able to, to have lunch, you know, with, with my son. But I also take, you know, more time to take care of myself, to think and, and figure out uh, not just go, go, go all the time. So how has your life changed and how are, how are you going to kind of maintain that as we go forward? So we don't want to go back to the old normal. We don't want to just keep a, a repeat of, of time before, because maybe that wasn't as satisfying as, as you wish. What would you really like that to be? Here's a great quote. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And then go get that. Because what the world needs is more people who have came alive. This is by uh, Harold Whitman. I think it's a, it's a great quote because we don't need people to just go through the motions. It might seem like, oh, we're getting a lot done in the world, but that's not, that's not what we want. We want lives that are, are worth living. We want to feel alive. We want to be energetic and, and excited. And we want people around us to feel that way. So if you're not feeling that way, you know, I'm glad that you're here because what we are going to talk about is how to define you know, what the purpose should be for your life. What do you want it to be? And the greatest thing is you get to define it. You get to decide what it should be. Studies have shown, and these are some statistics that you can look up, um, that having a strong sense of purpose results in the risk of death being 20% lower. It's kind of amazing that just knowing what your purpose in life is can improve your health. It doesn't seem like it should be that way. But they, they show that um, just, just having and knowing what your purpose in life is, you can have 2.7 times less heart disease. So people that are just going through the motions and just letting life come to them versus people that know what their direction is, know what they want to accomplish and have a plan, 
2.7% less, 2.7% times less heart disease, 2.1 times less digestive disease, and 1.2 times less cancer. I mean, that's, that's actually quite amazing. Think of all the money and all the effort we spent trying to improve our health. If all it really takes to improve our health is to have purpose in our life, and who knows, right, with COVID-19, this probably has to have some effect of, of having a better immune system if you have better purpose in your life. So there's a direct correlation to your health and your well-being by having purpose in your life. So here's some uh, things you can think about if you are to see if you are maybe stuck in a rut and we need to figure out how to get you out of it. Uh, the first one is you're marking things off your to-do list, maybe even on a regular basis, but it doesn't really seem like you're getting anything done. Then that means that you're really just kind of stuck in a rut and not going anywhere. All the days seem to blur together and you can't, remember what day it is. I hear this one a lot right now. It really shocks me. I always know what day it is. I make sure I know what day it is. I, I, the days are different. And I, uh, you know, kind of want to get up in the morning and attack the day. If you find yourself going, I don't know what day it is. Is it Saturday? Is it Tuesday? I don't really know. You need to have more direction and purpose in your life. When you wake up in the morning, you don't look forward to the day. You want to wake up in the morning and excited. There's opportunities in the day. You want to be able to have a chance to accomplish something. So you want to be excited when you get up in the day. If you're not, we need to do something about that. If you have free time, you don't really do anything with it because you're just too tired. Another indication that uh, you're just going through the motions. How about you know you should make a change? However, it's much easier to just be comfortable and complain about your situation than to do anything about it. Another thing that you can be sometimes, you know, stuck in a rut is you've been working on something for a long time. And then you focus on more on the amount of effort you've already put into it than you do trying to evaluate how much is left and it easy and reasonable to keep going. Another simple one is instead of actually making a plan to improve your life, you just dream about winning the lottery. So instead of saving for retirement, it's like, oh, maybe I'm just going to win the lottery. I don't have to worry about these things. And lastly, you feel unmotivated or unfulfilled on a regular basis. So if someone was going to ask you, you just really you just feel blah all the time. If you can relate to any of these things that I just read off, then it's a good indication that that you're stuck in the rut. I would say I was stuck in the rut um, several years ago. You know, my career it had gone great. You know, I I got to a certain point. I had several promotions, um, but my husband and I admitted we kind of felt like we were just stuck, just just kind of going through the motions. And we talked about it, and it. It was a hard decision, but we decided to move across the country, that I took a different job. I took a promotion, and um, and it was scary because we had to buy and sell a house. We had to move our kids in school. We had to find new doctors for my son. It, it was almost easier to just stay stuck in the rut than to, to make that move across the country. However, it was the best thing that we did to get out of that rut. And once we found, you know, our way out of it, we moved two more times in the, in the upcoming years, because we found out, you know, one, we knew how to do it. We knew things were going to be okay. It's not nearly as scary to do it the second or the third time, but that first time it was very scary. And, and, but we knew we were in the rut and we had to get out of it. So are you in your own kind of rut? Maybe you're not looking to make that big of a move and move across the country. Maybe it's something much smaller than that. But if you are stuck in a rut, I encourage you to, to really evaluate, um, you know, one, why you are stuck in the rut, two, you know, what we can do about it. Your new life purpose is more than just finding something to occupy your time. It's about pursuing goals and interests that focus on self-development, growth, and sharing with others. It should be an opportunity for adventure and discovery. 
Isn't that how you want to describe your life? Full of adventure and discovery. And adventure can be all kinds of things. You know, adventure doesn't have to be um, hiking along the Great Wall of China. Now, it can be. When I did that, I had a great time. But adventure could also be just walking, taking a walk in the neighborhood park, enjoying the sunset, enjoying the, the breeze and the, and the trees. There, there is adventure all over your life. Discovery doesn't have to always be big things. It can be little things, like having a cup of coffee at the new uh, coffee shop that opened down the street. So, so think about adventure and discovery and how to have that in your life in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes, yes, it should be big and uh, maybe life-changing. And sometimes it should just be little pleasant things that add, add to your life. So the first thing, if we're going to have uh, more purpose in your life, you have to spend time thinking about what do you want out of life. It's your life. You get, it, you get to define that. No one else gets to do that for you. But it is amazing the number of people that really don't know what they want. They may have good intentions, but if you really want to be happy, you know, have more joy and feel more fulfilled. You have to know kind of what you want and you have to, you have to take the time to define that for yourself. You can't live your life for your parents or your spouse or a significant other um, or even your kids or your friends. Now they all probably have very good intentions, but you really have to live life um, for yourself. So let me ask you some questions. First one, you know, why are you in the career that you're in? Was it someone else's dream or did you really choose it for yourself? Did you select it because it's safe or is an expected career choice? Maybe you're rebelling against uh, others and that, that's why you decide, well, I'll show them and I'll go down this path. But why did you choose the career that you're in? If you did choose it, is it going as you expected? Maybe you enjoyed it for a while, um, but is it still challenging and rewarding? And it's okay if it is or it isn't, right? These are your own personal uh, questions. Do you dream about doing something different? Maybe do you feel that doing something different isn't an option? That you're trapped because of family commitments? I know that can be a tough one because if you're taking care of kids, or your family's relying on your income that uh, that sometimes feels like it can limit, you know, what you can do with your life. Maybe you're actually happy with work and this isn't work related at all. It's the rest of your life is where you feel stuck. That all you do maybe is you go to work, home, eat, and then you repeat. And there's just nothing else really there in, in your life. Do you have time for friends, for family, or hobbies, you know, what, what are you doing outside of work? Maybe that's the part that you really need to, to focus on. One mistake that we make is too often we define ourselves by our career, um, but you are more than, than your career. So I know I started with the questions with, with career because that's a lot of times what people are thinking about is they, they're thinking about, you know, what is the purpose? What's the meaning of life of what I do? I spend most of my day at my job, at my career. So that's where I really want to, to figure out, you know, where my meaning is. But you are so, so much more than your career. So when I kind of define myself, I could say, yes, you know, I'm a CTO and I lead global engineering teams. But if I stopped there, um, that, that, that's not enough. You know, I'm so much more than that could say that um, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. I love to go to CrossFit. I love to run. I love to hike. I love to go camping. I love to go boating. Um, I love to travel. I love to try new restaurants and, and experiment with, with new food. Uh, I like to go hiking and find waterfalls. I love to dance. Um, I also like to coach and to mentor. Um, I love to record this podcast. 
and to um, to give speeches. And, and so when you think about this, if I just stopped after I told you that I'm a CTO and I lead a global engineering team, you wouldn't you wouldn't know anything more about me. And it's just so yes, it's a lot of hours in my day, but it's not it's not who I am. It's only a piece of who I am. I'm all those other things too. I'm also the hour I spend at CrossFit, right? In the in the morning and, and all the friends I, I spend there. So so think about yourself and think about your purpose kind of more holistically. Include all the pieces, not just what you do at, at work. And that will help you find purpose in, in your life. So I want you to journal and take some time to look forward a year, maybe five years if you, if you really want. And you know, what would an ideal life look like? And to find that for yourself, not for anyone else, you don't have to, uh, to get someone else's opinion on this, but what would you really want to have in, in your life? Even if you're, um, you know, not happy, if you haven't taken time to figure out what would make you happy, it's going to be really hard to actually change your life to, to make some improvements. You know, I actually kind of did a little bit of that last weekend. I was uh, thinking I needed some new clothes. We always like to go buy new clothes, especially at the changing of seasons. Summer's coming, it seems like the thing to do. But instead, I actually spent some time you know, in my closet last weekend and did some cleaning out and added some things to the donation pile. And, and then as I went through things, I realized I, I don't need any more clothes. More clothes aren't gonna make me more fulfilled. I needed some new running shoes and, and a couple things like that. But uh, the reality is, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't going to make me feel any more fulfilled. I, I was okay where I was at. So, so take some time in your life. Don't let the outside advertisements or outside people define, you know, what you want in life. Um, instead, be clear about what you want. So now I want to go over some steps, some things that you can actually do to help you find and feel purpose in your life. Because not only do you want to say, oh, this is the purpose in my life, but you want to feel like there's purpose in your life. And sometimes feeling like you have purpose is really a series of actions that you need to take and do in your life. The first one, a simple thing that you can do to have more purpose in your life is to volunteer. And there's all kinds of ways that you can volunteer. And so I recommend that, um, you know, find something that you're passionate about. And if you're not sure how, you know, find an organization that is aligned with your interests and then just ask them, hey, is there any way I could volunteer at this at this organization? The great thing about volunteering is you actually get a chance to meet great people because great people volunteer. And so even though you might not know them today, but you can just assume that the people that you're going to meet are good people because they're also volunteering. And this will allow you to feel like you're giving back, like you feel more satisfaction in your life. So that's the first thing, very easy that you can do is spend more time volunteering. The second thing I recommend you do is to create a vision board. Now there's a lot of online tools available these days. Um, I don't really know, you know what's the best ones out there but uh, you can search it and find all kinds of fancy, you know, digital online um, vision board tools, if that's your thing. Now, I like kind of the old fashioned way of making vision boards. I like to search for pictures, quotes, you know, things that make you excited, find things that you're attracted to and, and print them out. Maybe it's in magazines, cut them out the old fashioned way, um, and then tape and glue them onto a piece of paper. And I mount mine on the door of my closet. So every time I go into my closet, you know, I see my vision board and it reminds me of, you know, things I want to do in my life, things that I can be, things that I can accomplish, um, motivational quotes. And this will help you make sure that, uh, you know, you're moving your life forward. It's giving you some sense of direction and it's that constant reminder. The next one I'm going to uh, suggest, it's very important to have purpose in your life, is you have to take action. Too often, even though we know what we want to do, we don't take action. You should be taking some type of action every day. 
it doesn't always have to be big action. It can be little steps that you can do. Um, don't, you know, spend all your time planning. Don't spend all your time worrying about, is it going to be successful? Is it going to work out? Instead, start taking action. You can adjust the plan. You can, you can make, you know, learn from maybe it didn't work. And you can say, oh, well, now I can, I can try this other way. But make sure every day that you're doing something that you can take action. The fourth thing is never stop learning. This is very important, especially to make sure you don't get stuck, you know, back in a rut. You always want to be learning something. You should learn something every day. Sometimes it's small things and sometimes it's big things. You know, these days there are so many ways that you can learn. You can read, you can watch webinars, you can listen to podcasts, you can take online classes, you can go to seminars, you can take, you know, official training, um, like college courses and get certificates. There's, there's so many different ways to learn. It's, it's the easiest way ever. A lot of it can be free. You can go on YouTube and search on whatever you want to learn on and then take that action and try it out and see if it works. And that will, that will help you with learning. Last weekend, we decided to make gummy bears uh, at my house. We looked up a recipe, and me and my sons, we, we made some gummy bears. Then uh, it didn't quite work out the first time, so we adjusted the recipe, and we made a second batch. And the second batch was actually pretty good. You know, why did we do this? We could buy gummy bears. It just gave us a chance to, to do something together, and it gave us a chance to, you know, learn, do some research, and, and try something new. So I, you always have to be finding some way to, to learn and drive improvements into, into your life. I listen to tons of podcasts, especially when I uh, exercise, when I go running, or maybe if I'm driving. So that's another way that you can learn. And uh, I also encourage you when you're learning is to not only pick things that um, – maybe that are in alignment with, with your kind of thoughts or direction. Sometimes try to learn things around, you know, completely new topics, or maybe it's around um, someone else's opinion that you don't agree with and you want to learn more. Um, you could do it right now with like Black Lives Matter. There's a lot of people out there that maybe you don't understand what some of the protests are about. It's a great time to ask and say, hey, Help me understand. I don't really know what I can do to support this. I don't really know, um, you know, you know what the big deal is. You could actually, you know, go and just ask people and listen. It's not a, it's not that you have to suddenly agree with everything that you're listening to or learning about, but you can get that new perspective and go, oh, okay, it makes more sense. I understand at least where they're coming from, even if you do or don't agree with them. Number five is accept there's more than one thing. There's not like this one purpose that you have to figure out for your life. There's not only one right answer when it, when it comes to this. There's lots of things. There's lots of, of ways or potential um, solutions or purposes or, or things that you could focus on for your, your life. And it can change. So you don't have to say, oh, I'm going to take a whole bunch of effort and just try to figure out what the purpose is for my life and then I'll have it forever. No, no, that's not how it works. You want to make sure you're kind of heading in the direction that you want and learn and adapt as, as you go along. So just accept that there's not like just this one answer. And if you meditate long enough, like it's just going to be given to you and then you're just going to know and you're enlightened. But that's really not how it, how it works. The sixth thing is you need to have some hobbies. You need to try new things. Like one thing like I like to do for a hobby is I don't do it real often, but I like to go to like the classes where they like kind of guide you through a painting. Now I'm never going to be an expert painting. I don't really care to take lots of painting classes and, and get really good at it, but you need to, to fill your life full of, of new things. The, the last thing that I recommend that you do is you take some time and you create a vision statement. It's very important. We think about vision statements when it comes to companies and, and writing out, you know, their, their purpose, but you should write out your own and it should be a little aspirational. It should have words like I'm a fit, energetic woman, or maybe it's, I'm an incredible, successful coach and mentor to underprivileged kids. Um, maybe it could be, I'm a world-class inventor with lots of patents. 
It could also be a whole paragraph. So we're going to have lots of statements in it. But take the time to write out, you know, what is your vision statement? And then print it out and tape it to the mirror. So when you get up in the morning, you know, you look at it. And that will help you remind you of, of your purpose. So let me just uh, to go over, just repeat quickly, you know, the items that we talked about. Number one, make sure you volunteer. It's a great way to meet new people and to feel good um, about your life. Create a vision board. Number three, take action. Make sure you never stop learning, except that there's more than, than one thing um, when it comes to purpose in life. Have some hobbies, fill your life full of, of new things. And lastly, create a vision statement to help guide you um, at, and understand you know where you're going and be that reminder of not only what you are but what you're going to you know accomplish as you go forward in your life we can only be ourselves and i have learned you know by embracing all myself all parts of myself that i have improved my life that when i have had the courage to be seen my life has has gotten better and that's why i want to share this with with you i have uh, worked hard to have you know more purpose in my life i've transformed it um, I invite you to check out my, my website, CourageToBeSeen.com. There you can learn about my coaching program. Um, my contact information is there, my email. I'd love to hear about you. Also, I post daily motivational quotes on Facebook and Instagram. So I encourage you to follow me um, on either of those platforms and subscribe to this uh, podcast. That way you get a reminder as the next one comes out and you don't miss any episodes. I hope you have a great day and I hope to hear from you soon.